Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. I'm Chef Dean Max. Today we're gonna do meatballs. I'm here with my buddy Doug, who is an Italian cooking aficionado. No, we can't. We're, we're, I don't we're, know about I, that. Am I embellishing a little? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's my own roommate in college, and we cooked a lot of Italian food together as kids. And I want to share some of these recipes. So his meatball recipe is really good, and we're gonna do that today. So Italian meatballs, stay with me. Click subscribe if you're not doing that. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, and ring that bell, and we'll send you what we have coming up in the future. So, see you back in a second. All right, we're back. Meatballs. So, here we go. With meatballs, we got to start with meat, right? So, let's talk mm -hmm. about that. What do you have in your mixture? Well, right now we have um, a combination of uh, sirloin and pork. Okay. Um, and I used to just make uh, sirloin meatballs, but I found that they're a little, they could be a little hard at times. Yeah, they are, right? Like right. Be regular beef, uh, beef ground uh, beef is like, can be tougher. And that's why a lot of people put veal in too. Like I noticed in Italy, a lot right. of people will mix veal and uh, beef or pork. It's more tender, but mm -hmm. pork definitely has the same texture, like being right. softer, right? Mm -hmm. And it gives you a little fattiness. Yes, absolutely. And it's, um, yeah, so it's good to mix the meat, you know? Right. Um, so if you don't eat pork, you could probably sub in veal in this, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever done lamb? No, I no. Not, I'm not a big lamb. Yeah. Some people <laughs> just don't like the flavor of lamb fat. It's gamey. Like when it's gamey, it's gamey, right? Yeah. But like good lamb can be pretty mild. So I have had lamb meatballs, and I do like them, especially when they're mixed with uh, lamb. Uh, and pork or lamb and, and beef, but you know, that's up to you. Um, but so today you've got about 50-50 uh, ground beef and ground pork. And I'd say we have about a, a pound here. Maybe. A little bit more, maybe yeah, a pound, maybe a pound quarter, and a half. Yeah. pound and a half, right. Yep. Which will make a decent amount of meatballs for you. Okay. Um, and again, meatballs are something you can put in the refrigerator with sauce, take them out, have them any time. Yeah, they know? sit in there forever. They right? will, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they'll keep. Okay. And obviously we freeze them too a lot, mm -hmm. so it's, that's another way to, to put them in there, put them in there frozen in the sauce. Um, An Italian family like mine, I, I, we're kind of a meatball snob. <laughs> I don't really eat other people's meatballs no. other than my family members. You know, it's a stretch for you me gotta, to go out you, and uh, have a meatball at a restaurant. At a restaurant, right? right? So, yeah, you're never really happy with them, right? And, and then it's always, I was just talking to my brother the other day about who makes the best meatballs. He's claiming he does. Like I do. What are you I talking know. about? <laughs> so. Exactly. You know, you have to be competitive on that stuff, yes, right? Absolutely. Okay, so simple ingredients, right? We've got we're gonna use some breadcrumbs, right? Now these breadcrumbs are um, these breadcrumbs are ones that I made. Uh, you can click a recipe up here for my olive oil breadcrumbs, and all we've done is added a little bit of chopped uh, fresh parsley into that. So um, uh, we've got breadcrumbs, olive oil. And parsley already in this, and it's all crispy. Mm. I keep them in a airtight container like this mason jar, and they stay crispy for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've had I have them for around for a couple weeks. And right, no worries. Um, so, what do you put in first? Do you put the egg in first, and then do you meet the no, breadcrumb last? I do or? breadcrumbs, cheese, and then I put the, in, the egg, egg in at the end. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So why don't I sprinkle this in? You washed your hands, so I'm gonna let you. Yeah, this. I know some people don't like to touch the meat, but you gotta mm -hmm. roll the meatball eventually, right? You could use a wooden spoon if you don't like to touch meat. Yeah. But yeah, eventually you're gonna have to mold the meatballs with your hands. Exactly. Exactly. So, so I want to put that in. What do you think about that for for a That's good. That's I good. Think I'd say what do we use? Like a half a cup or a little that more was, than a half. That a was cup. probably like a half a cup, maybe yeah. a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a pound and a half of meat, probably half a cup of uh, of that, and then this you want to just. How much cheese? You use a lot, right? I, I like a lot of cheese, and I, I use equal parts cheese and breadcrumbs. Okay. Right. So So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a half a cup of cheese in there right now. We're going to see. The cheese is important, and to have really good breadcrumbs. If you have that, you're you're pretty much set. Now, this one, we use, mm -hmm. a, we use, use a mix of, of Parmesan and Pecorino Romano. Mm -hmm. So Parmesan is cow's milk and pecorino romano sheep's milk so it gives you saltiness right mm -hmm. and the cow's milk gives you a little creaminess but also that super aged flavor of parmesan right, right? So, really nice yeah really nice so um from that we're gonna do some basil i'll let you start mixing that up doug how about mm -hmm. that or do, you, or do you mix it or then you put the you put the egg and then mix everything no i put yeah i put the egg in and then i mix it 
all. Know, okay. Rather than mixing it twice. Right. Right. So I'm gonna, so. I'm gonna he's gonna crack those eggs in there. I'm gonna have this this fresh basil. Now to make a chiffonade basil, you basically layer the leaves flat like this, um, and you roll these up. And what that does is it keeps you from bruising the basil too much. And they they call this the chiffonade. So lay it's layering these lay, uh, layers of leaves like this. Right, you can see how I just put them on top of each other, um, and you're cutting it all in one direction, right? And you roll this up, kind of like a cigarette. Doug's a little bit better at this in college than I was. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then we cut this really thin, like this. And then I just go back and I cut it a couple times, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So then that's our basil. Boom. It's going to have a little bit of Italian flavor in there, nice fresh basil. Mm -hmm. And now you put what out? Oh, we want to put a little salt? Yeah, a little, okay. bit, a little bit of salt because we have, you know, the we have cheese. The which, pecorino romano yeah. salty, yeah. And then I'm going to put some ground pepper. Some pepper. You know, because ground pepper is always nice, right? right. Freshly ground is mm -hmm. always the best. Okay. And then the last ingredient, I put some milk in. Okay. Um, just whole milk, just right? Like, yeah. Just, you know, a drizzle. Give it a little liquid. Yeah, that looked like a full tablespoon probably, yeah. right? You don't want dry meatballs. You no. know, again. So, Definitely not. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and mix, mix it, it with my hands. Sure. Go ahead. And this might grow some people out. But well, you know what? They <laughs> just got to get in there. They don't cook. Those yeah. people don't cook. They're not right? watching my channel. They're watching like <laughs> NASCAR or something. I don't know what they're watching, but right. they're not watching cooking channels. People who like to cook, they like to get in there with their hands, right? Yeah. So you got to mix yeah. it up and you're going to... Wash your hands first, though. Of I would say that. Yes. <laughs> Have obviously. manicured fingers, right? Definitely. You, know. you don't want like a random fingernail in there, <laughs> like if you're wearing Lee press ons or something. <laughs> right. So I'm kind of squeezing it like with my fist to make sure we're getting all the ingredients mixed well. Yeah, exactly. You know, because you want them all to be kind of consistently um, mixed. Yeah. And we're almost there. Yeah. You and know, you don't work it too around. much because, no, yeah, you don't right? want to work it too much. Don't work it too much. Um, like, like kebabs that are worked for a long time. And that what they want, try to do in a kebab is to emulsify the fat and the meat by your warm hands. And so you don't want that as much in this. You want this to have nice texture mm -hmm. still, not be that smooth kebab flip. So, and then we're going to start to roll yeah, our I'll meatballs. Help you with, I'll help you with that. So you, you take a... You take, what, like a nice good tablespoon? You want to make them similar size, right? So I don't like a gigantic meatball, yeah. personally. I like them kind of medium size. That's not why I don't like restaurants who do those gigantic meatballs Yeah, it's either. too much. It's too much. Uh, for it, me. I don't think they cook properly mm -hmm. either. So we're going to layer this in. Do we want to put any olive oil in the bottom? Olive of oil, yes. Okay. So we're going to take our pan here. And not I'm gonna too put, much because you're going to have the fat from the meatballs. That's going to come know? out. We just don't want it to stick too much to the right. pan. So I'm going to layer that in. And now, now let's talk about that too, because this is uh, something that some people would, would uh, a lot like you bake yours, and that seems to be a lot of Italians do bake theirs. But mm -hmm. some people fry, right? They do. Or pan fry. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I prefer baking. Yeah. You know? I mean, so. you grew up in New York City, so what do a lot of Italians do up there? Do they like to fry them, bake them? Bake them. Bake it them. It depends upon the family, though. Okay. You know, so. But we always baked. You always baked them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish rolling all these and we're going to pop this in the oven, what, 350, right? Mm -hmm. So like at 350 degrees, we're going to pop this in the oven and it's probably going to take about 20 minutes. And when they're, um, after they cooked about 20 minutes and they're nice and crispy, um, uh, we're going to pull them out and then uh, we're going to show you how we incorporate those in the sauce. So we'll see you back in a little bit. The meatballs are in the oven now and we're going to let those cook for a little while. And now we're going to make the sauce for that, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is start. We're making your a basic, simple kind of tomato sauce, right? We're doing some olive oil in here. We're going to heat this up. Um, from that, I've got some chopped onion. So I'll, let me show them how to chop an onion really quick. Um, you want to take you know, the onion, ha peel it, half it, right? So it sits flat on the counter surface. Then I just go straight down like this, you know, multiple times. You know, depending on how thin you want to make the onion, it doesn't be that thin, right? Mm -hmm. on this, but it, you don't want big chunks. So then you come back and you go horizontally like this, right? And you do probably one, two, three, maybe four horizontal cuts all the way towards the end here. And then you slice down and that gives you your dice. So this is a nice skill that you're going to want to use in the kitchen to dice onions. So how, are, how good are you at this stuff? 
I mean, I know I do. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the thing you is, it's watch just, your fingers. It just takes practice, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't drink wine and do this, right? <laughs> so I'm going to go back and just rough cut all of these here, these end pieces, because I don't want to throw any of that away. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's it. So now what I like to do is start with garlic. How about you? Do you I like to perfume the oil with garlic. Garlic first. Yeah, yep. garlic first. Mm-hmm. So what adding onion does, you guys, is onion um, kind of has a lot of water in it. So it really cools down the, sa- the saute. So when you start with the, uh, the garlic, the garlic is going to perfume the oil with this garlic flavor, right? And then you're going to, st- so you don't want to burn the garlic, you're going to add in the onions to kind of, um, slow it down, right? Mm-hmm. So here I like I like slicing garlic. Do you have a preference whether you like it diced or you know? I, I slice it as well. Yeah, I, I like slicing it too. Mm-hmm. You kind of see it in there. You can kind of see it in your pot in your sauce later. I used to use a garlic press, but I find it's a little bit strong. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah, uh, slice is a little milder. <clears throat> so here you can see we're gonna just perfume this now. You ever add, like, I'll put a little salt and pepper, I'll put a little pepper in here mm-hmm. for a spice, but you, I, I show people sometimes, I use a lot sometimes of, um, of like, red chili in there. I don't know, do you ever put chili flakes in yours? Yeah, a little red pepper. You a little red yeah, pepper flakes? absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it works really good. Give it a little spice, yeah. not too much. Not know? too much. So you could add chili flakes in this if you wanted this to be, um, you know, spicy, and then, from here, now we're perfuming that. We don't want it to burn the garlic. We're going to add in our onions. And the onions, we're going to just want to sweat off the water from that, right? Mm-hmm. Now, um, in your t- typical tomato sauce for this, do you tend to use a different one than a mother sauce? Or do you use? Do you guys strictly use your mother sauces for? Yeah. Mm-hmm. For, for meatballs? For yeah. meatballs. Yeah. Just a, a really basic tomato sauce. A basic tomato sauce. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because I know, you know, everybody has their kind of, their special house-made sauce that they like to use. So this is simple. If you didn't want to cook this and do this, you just want to have these simple meatballs, you could just use a really well-made store-bought tomato sauce, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and then just, uh, uh, if you wanted to even like, kick those off. Sometimes I tell people if they're going to be lazy and buy a store-bought sauce, then they should maybe at least... Throw a little garlic in there, add, in. add yeah. a little now, mm-hmm. okay? So what, what I'm going to have you do is show them how you, what tomatoes you use. Why don't you talk about the tomatoes you like to use? Well, I, I go for a San Marzano. It's, it's a, pretty much the best tomato you can get from Italy. Yeah, um, they come from the, the slope area of uh, Mount Vesuvius, right? So it's right. all of that, like, volcanic mm-hmm. soil that, that supposedly add this sweetness to... The tomatoes, so it's really like a plum tomato or a mm-hmm. Roma tomato, right? But it's grown in a certain area that makes it that. So it's let's, a really nice tomato. Yeah. All right, I'm going to turn this down a little bit so till we get the tomatoes in there. So you've got a little tomato. I'm going to add a little bit of water to the can here, and I'm going to deglaze this because I don't want my I don't want our um, I don't want our, our uh, Onions to burn or garlic to burn, so you got to kind of do that quickly. Okay. And I'm going to kind of mush up the uh, tomatoes so you're not eating a big, whole, chunky tomato. Yeah, because these are whole tomatoes, but right. we like and that then, because it's going to give you some body, right? Yeah, but that's like a whole tomato. So you're just going to lightly do that so you don't get it all over the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't, don't get it all over it my gently, floor. Right? <laughs> and there we go. Exactly. So you're going to get, you know, you're going to get some meat of the tomato, but you're not going to be biting into a whole tomato. Right. Now, I'm going to take, you like to put sugar, right? So I've got a little, I do, I yeah. got a little bit of turbinata sugar here. How much do you put in there? Just like a tablespoon. Like a tablespoon? Okay. So I'll put Again, a, to cut the acidity. Yeah, especially when you're using a canned tomato, right? Mm-hmm. Even though these are amazing quality, you'll see that these, if you get real Italian uh, San Marzano's, they're going to be probably triple the price of a regular domestic canned tomato. So you're going to say to yourself, well, let me get the just cheaper one. It's easier. But it, it's a big difference, yeah. right? The you should quality, use good tomatoes. The quality of the tomato is a huge difference. So And, uh, you know, they can be, any tomato can be a little tart at times. So, like, the, adding the sugar does cut the acidity a bit. Okay. So there we so go. So you rinse your hands. And I'm going to yep. put this in here. So I'll show you guys how we put this in here, like this. And I'm just going to gently... Uh, 
put all of our sauce in there like this. Okay, you can see that's nice and stirred in. And from there, we're going to bring this to a boil. Now, we want to cook this down at a simmer for how long? How long? 20 minutes? 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, that's sure. what I usually do mine. 20, it's a 30 quick minutes. sauce. It is a quick sauce. It's not mm -hmm. like one of these eight-hour, right. you know, all-day Sunday sauces, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could do that as well. You could. It works good, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And now your Sunday sauce, do you put meat in yours as well? You put, like, pork chops and all this kind of I things, I do, too? yeah. If, uh, if um, I'll get the bone, bone pork. Okay. Pork. Uh, bake it in the oven, and then I throw some pork into the uh, into the sauce, and it gives it a really nice flavor. Yeah, that's super it popular adds something. For, for those mother sauces, mm -hmm. right? Like to put in, you know, either sausage or, or put in pork. I'll put a steak, a steak, you know, in my in the sauce. If right. I have it left over or, right. you know. Any um, meat flavor, right? Yeah, a London broil, you know, if you had something, throw it in there. Yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> good. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook this down for about... 20 to 30 minutes and then we'll be back to show you what it looks like and we're going to put our meatballs in that and then we're going to try them out so stay with us okay guys it's been about 20 minutes and you can see how these meatballs are nicely they've got a little crust right mm -hmm. that's where you like them yep all right so from here we're just going to drop these into our sauce over here so you can see on the bottom too they get like a little bit of a, a golden brown crisp. right mm -hmm. i like that yeah but you're not going to get any of the wateriness. And then the little bit of fattiness around here, you kind of just leave that in there, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the egg, too, that uh, comes out a bit, Th That too. does that? Mm hmm Okay. But, yeah, so you can break those up for me, too, if you want with your fingers there, Doug, like this. Yeah. And then we'll add these. Now, how long do you like to have them in the sauce before you eat them? You know, just, I mean, like we mentioned earlier, it could be all day. Okay. But it could be a half hour. Could be day. Know? It could be days. So, a lifetime. But, but I like the meatball to have some red sauce. You know, yes. some people will eat the meatball without any sauce, but I, I like it soaked in the sauce. Oh, I like it soaked in yeah. sauce too. So Definitely. it really depends. I mean, if you guys are the type that are okay with just having meatballs and then just a little sauce kind of spread on top, you can do that. But I think too that by adding them in here, cooking these at a really low temperature for 15, 20 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when we, you've already got it reduced like this, you could actually turn it on super low and put it, a lid on it so it almost doesn't Simmer, dehydrate anymore. Right. It like, mm -hmm. just kind of stays, gets moist in there. So we're going to let this cook for about, about 10, 15 more minutes to get that, that flavor, and then we're going to try it out. Okay, it's been about, uh, about 20 minutes now. There are, our, um, our beautiful meatballs have been sitting in this sauce. So I'm going to make you one of these here, Doug. There you go. And then I'll give you your spoon there. And then I'm going to take one of these as well. We're going to try it out. I mean, proof is in the pudding, like they say, right? So let's taste it. And they, they do get more tender the more you cook them, like mm -hmm. in the sauce, right? Mm. Really nice. Super tender, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, you can see the texture of these, really nice texture, not dry, not greasy, just perfect. Right amount of cheese, right amount of breadcrumbs, um, really tasty. Mm. I got a hot piece of tomato on mine. <laughs> some nice basil in there. Right, mm -hmm. a good glass of red wine, some meatballs, tomato sauce. Doug, thanks for showing me your recipe. And we will see you guys back in the kitchen soon. Um, meatballs. Try them at home. Enjoy them. Mm. Cheers.